did we get here? Most, some of you have been here longer than I have. Um, but when I just have to use my own personal experience as a frame of reference. So when I started at CASA in 2000, there were about 500 children living in foster care here in Lane County. And last week, there was probably 1,250. It's been staying around 1,200 for months and months and months now. And if I stay in the national CASA model, I will never, we will never be able to serve every child. And you know the children that you're serving today, their stories. And you know the difference that you have made in, the, in those children's lives. The staff, we have to, you know, it's, it's hard to go home sometimes at night when you know there's not a CASA that we can appoint to some case that Verna just heard in court and she's like, oh my god, if we had a CASA today, we'd have, let's get one on, you know, today. And we, we, don't, we, we, can, we don't have one. And so we are really, uh, we would never be able to serve um, all the children. So I, along with our board of directors, I wanted, that's another um, pivotal group of people that, would, that are making this happen, is the board of directors created a strategic plan uh, about two years ago. And in that plan they said, we need you to look at the efficiencies of the staffing model um, just to make sure that we're doing everything we can to serve as many children as we can. So just having that in the strategic plan, because uh, that, that's what, the strategic plan drives my time. So whatever the plan says is where I'm spending my time. So I look at that, okay, uh, we need to start looking at that. And um, the first thing I did is I met with Brendan Nafudi's husband and I said, I need to know where am I, what I'm shooting for. When I say I want to serve all the children in Lane County, I want to know a number. I don't want to just say, you know, some random number out there. I want to know that I have a number. So John and I spent about seven months. Um, he's, a, he's a number guy and I am not. <laughs> um, he was very patient with me. Um, we sat there and crunched all these numbers. We, we, looked, we looked at numbers of entries and exits to foster care. We looked at numbers of um, dependency cases opening and closing. And we looked at uh, what's been happening in the last um, 10 years in ter terms of uh, trends and what do we see coming. And uh, it, was, it was really a difficult process to go through to try and come up with a number at the end. And we were looking at 10 years worth of data. And I, we were looking at those 10 years because uh, in, two, in, those, in that 10 years, we had that mini recession in early 2000, and then things got to be pretty good, and then we had this big one. So I figure um, no other 10 year period can be you know, worse than this, I mean, maybe worse, I hope not. But, it's gonna, you know, it wasn't just a rosy, and there, you know, it wasn't 10 years of everything's hunky dory, and it was, it, you know, didn't look like that. So, it had, it did its ups and downs. So, seven months later, we have a number, and that number is 702, and I don't want to forget the two. Mm -hmm. So, we need to be serving 702 children, and when we can do that, we will have met the need. And you might say, well, wait a second, you just said there was 1,200 kids here in Lake County in foster care. So 702 doesn't make it work. So we know, unfortunately, that Oregon has one of the highest rates of foster care in the nation. And Lane County has the highest rate in the state of Oregon. So there's a lot of attention now being put on why is that and what can we do differently. Um, so we know there's some initiatives called the Casey Family Initiative that's putting together a team of people here in Lane County to look at what's going, why is that number so high and can we do things differently so that there aren't so many children um, in foster care. The other thing that the state's looking at that I never thought in my entire life that I'd ever have DHS looking at this, but they are talking, not talking, they, they are, starting to redirect their resources to the front end. So meaning, instead of waiting until children are abused um, or neglected and, and need the intervention of DHS and come into foster care, DHS is starting to look at, at the front end. How can we support children and families before they, they come here? So 
part, part of that strategy um, they call differential response. So you will start hearing about that, but that's part of their strategy to redirect their resources up front. So we know if things like the Casey Family Initiative work, and we know that differential response or DHS redirecting their resources work, that that number will actually drive down. So by the time we have enough cost of volunteers, um, we believe that we'll increase our number of volunteers at the same time that that number is going to start driving down, and that's how we end up with 702. So then I knew, 702, how are we going to serve 702 kids? So, and I don't do PowerPoint, so Megan has some <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see this, but this is our current staffing model. So in our current staffing model, we have 9.5 FTE, which means full-time equivalent. We actually have 12 staff, but 9.5 FTE. Our budget's $630,000. Uh, the cost of that, if you want to break it down per child, is about $2,100. Last year, we served almost 300 children. We had 137 advocates. Um, and we had four staff people supporting those 137 advocates. So if I was going to stay in this model, um, this number with uh, FTE would look close to 19 to 20 FTE. My annual budget would be about 1.2 to 1.4 million dollars. Um, we would hopefully be serving 702 kids, um, and I would still need about 325 uh, cost of volunteers. So. The reality of, um, in this economy and just this, you know, and what, what we live in today, that's never going to happen. You know, CASA of Lane County is, is great at fundraising, and we're great, great at relationships, and we're great at, you know, keeping our donors with us, but, and, and I'm great, and Sarah Kate's great, and I have all of us that do, do the fundraising here, you know, we're pretty awesome, but we're not that awesome. There's no way. We could raise $1.2 million year after year after year um, and serve all the kids. So we had to think out. So then it's like, okay, if it can't be in the old model, what could it be? And luckily for me um, and for this organization, Megan Benevento was doing her senior, not her senior, but she was doing an internship project for her, her degree at the U of O. And she came knocking on my door and said, uh, I need to get internship hours in, what do you have for me? And I said, can you figure this out? <laughs> here's what I know, here's what I know some people are doing around the country, and could you go talk with my staff, can you go talk with staff that are supporting CASA volunteers right now and find out what takes up most of their time, what do they like about their job, and what do they like, not like about their job? Can you, can you go do all that work for me? So she did. And she came back in the winter time, and she had this model. Now that sounds all easy and well and good, and it wasn't. Um, so one of the things that I've learned this year is about how to manage change, and how not to manage change. So I think I've learned the hard way. My staff has learned along with me. Thank you. Um, and and we're hoping that when other people. Uh, hopefully embark on this journey that they don't make the same mistakes that I made um, going forward. So, all excited, yeah, Megan comes back and says, I got it, I know what it's going to look like. Um, so why don't we show them what, it's, what it looks like. Okay. So, what is called, is it's called a peer coordinator model. And what it does is it takes our seasoned class of volunteers and utilizes them in a coaching support role for new CASA. And we're, right now, staff have one to 30, so they have 30 CASAs with, that they're supporting. So a peer coordinator would only have three to five. So their caseload would never be more than five. So, the, um, again, this sounds really simple, and this been ta it took us 18 months <laughs> to figure this all out. Um, so, in the new model, if we're using this peer coordinator model, I will need to only grow my staff by three, because remember we started at 9.5 FTE, so I need to grow my staff by three. 
my budget by 100000 which drops, um, instead of $2,100 per kid, it's only going to cost me a little over $1,000. I'll get to serve 100, the 702 children that I want to serve with 325 CASAs, so we need to more than double um, our CASA base. And I'm going to need 65 peer coordinators. I'm starting at zero. Well, not really. I'm at, we're starting with six. But eventually I'll need 65. And I'll need five program staff people to support these peer coordinators.